رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب اوزعني ان اشكر نعمتك التي انعمت علي وعلى والدي وان اعمل صالحا ترضاه واصلح لي في ذريتي اني تبت اليك واني من المسلمين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التاويل السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته This is the last uh, lesson inshallah we'll cover the last ayat of surah al-hujurat so we're finishing the tafsir of surah al-hujurat which we have been covering for the past several weeks uh, inshallah let's read the ayat and then we'll begin the tafsir inshallah if you want you can open it on your phones surah al-hujurat from ayah 14 okay from ayah 14 surah al-hujurat <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم وَإِن تُطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ والله بكل شيء عليم يمنون عليك أن أسلموا قل لا تمنوا علي إسلامكم بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم للإيمان إن كنتم صادقين إن الله يعلم غيب السماوات والأرض والله بصير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم uh, Before I begin the tafsir of the ayat I just remembered uh, when I was a student in Medina uh, Sheikh Abdullah Shinqiti who was, a, who was a son of the author of Adwa al-Bayan one of the very unique tafsirs of Qur'an through Qur'an. Sheikh Muhammad al-Amin al his son Sheikh Abdullah was one of my teachers there, alhamdulillah. And in his tafsir lesson, and he covered the tafsir multiple times, the whole Qur'an, multiple times in Al-Masjid al-Nabwi, subhanAllah. Look at the, the barakah, subhanAllah. When you look at him, you look, you look at Nur, wallahi. There's something special about him. Uh, Sheikh Abdullah, before his tafsir lesson, before he would do it, they would always recite the ayat. So I'm kind of following his practice. Or before you begin the tafsir lesson, don't just start, read the ayat, you know, uh, hear it, beautify it, and then go into the tafsir of it. Uh, just to tie everything back also because people have been requesting that I record the durus again. Uh, just to tie everything back with what we have covered in Surah Al-Hujurat. Surah Al-Hujurat, as I have mentioned, it is a surah that talks a lot about akhlaq and adab. Characteristics and morals that Muslims need to have in their lives. And I myself find that Surah Al-Hujurat and Surah Al-Nur are very key in the life of every Muslim. So inshallah, after Surah Al-Hujurat, I'm thinking we start Surah Al-Nur. What do you guys think, yes or no? Surah Al-Nur is a good idea? Inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all nur. Qul ameen. Allahumma ja'ala mimman yamshi bin nur. Wa alayhi nur. There's a whole thing when you go to the masjid, you're walking and you make that dua from my, in the front, on my right, on my left, all around me, Ya Allah give me nur. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this beautiful surah He tells us to honor and glorify the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And have respect to him And be careful to harm him sallallahu alayhi wa In himself and in his ummah In himself, you remember in the beginning of the surah Where uh, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumah The sabab al nuzul They were arguing with one another About uh, who, sh who should be sent Which is, they're doing it for the benefit of the ummah But their voices were raised 
inside, uh, in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So those ayat were revealed. And then the Bedouin who came and he said, Ya Ukhruj Ya Muhammad, come out from your house. You know, he was calling him, calling him, calling him. You know, uh, the ayah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says about them, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرَ لَهُمْ And, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ If only that day, صَبَرُوا If they were patient, حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ If you came out to them, it would have been better for them. Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ayyun Sood, who was known as one of the great scholars of Syria, uh, and a great uh, muqrit, he, uh, he, was so, he was such a special individual that he would always be able to uh, re re remember the ayat of Quran in any place Like subhanAllah like Instead of giving responses through normal speech He always rem he always uh, Like an ayah would just come to him And one time they were uh, He was with uh, another person His student And they were visiting a shaykh And so they had knocked one time And, uh, he, and then he asked the shaykh Should I knock again? Should I knock again? And so the Shaykh subhanAllah ala tool, the ayah came to him, Walaw Annahum Sabaru Hatta Tahruja Ilayhim, Lakana Khaira Lahum Allahu Ghafur Rahim. So subhanAllah, some of these scholars, some of the scholars, because of how much they deal with the Quran, it's it's as though it's just flowing in them. They're always ready for it. You know, they're always ready to give a jawab from the Quran, subhanAllah. There was one incident also I read uh, in the in the seerah of Imam Dawood al tai Okay? He was a student of Imam Abu Hanifa, but he was really involved in ibadah, in zuhud, in all of that. And uh, someone, one of the, you know, the people that dealt with uh, the hakim, the ruler, that was under the ruler, basically, the one, if, you're, if you're not the hakim and the oppressor and you, you are under him, you're still an oppressor. And so uh, he came, he, he had no choice but to come to ask Imam Dawood a question. Okay? And they had a relationship, they had a, a connection through family, between them. And so he came and he asked them a question and Imam Dawood al was looking at him like, I'm not gonna answer this zalim. Like he didn't even want to look at him. And so the person that he was accompanied with, with his, I think it was his cousin or something, uh, he said, why don't you answer him? He's your nephew, he's your cousin, he's this, he's that. He, the, he mentioned the family tie. And then he immediately recited the ayah, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ When the horn is blown, خلاص, there's no ansab, there's no relation between people. So subhanAllah, he always remember the ayah. This was something unique about scholars, you'll see. Back to the tafsir. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, uh, tells us in this surah, from the maqasid of surah, that we... That we're, we're told not to harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Through himself and not harm him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam By harming his ummah When you harm your brothers and sisters of Islam You're also, you're also harming Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You see uh, and, and this is done by having takabbur And looking down on others And seeing yourself as better And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us in this surah Innam al mu'minun ikhwa Believers are what? Brothers, and then he mentioned six different qualities that a, per uh, a person, six different things that a person should avoid in those ayat that I covered. Okay, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminds us at the end of all of that, that you are in akramakum. First of all, all of you are from Adam and Hawa. And the best of you are the most pious and righteous amongst you. Inna Allah, and he ends that, Inna Allah alimun khabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware and he's all knowing, you know what that means? That you cannot present something in front of him and show something in front of him except that there is ikhlas. And so this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into these ayat, qalatil a'rabu amana, which we'll go into. Inna akramakum inda Allah atqaakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, the most noble amongst you is the one who has the most piety. And having the, obviously being the most piety will not happen unless you have taqwa. And the root of iman is having taqwa from shirk. So this is the tie between that and the A'rab, the Bedouins, they wanted to show that, look, I'm the best, I'm the best. So they started to use, oh, khalas, we are al-mu'minun. Nahnu amanna. So this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes uh, and says about them, qalatil al-A'rabu, the Bedouins say, amanna, nahnu mu'minun. We have come to believe, we have this high status of iman. Qul, ya Rasulullah, lam tu'minu. No, no. Lissa, you did not reach that level of iman. Walakin, but say, Qulu aslamna. We have submitted. Islam. What's the difference between Islam and iman? 
Islam and Iman. If Islam and Iman are mentioned together, there's a difference. If they're mentioned separately, it's the same. If I say anta Muslim, and if I say anta Mu'min, it's the same thing. Right? Muslim, Mu'min, they're usually used synonymously. But over here, from a linguistic perspective, Islam is outer expression of religion. Outer expression of religion. Saying shahada, doing the things that a Muslim does. Iman is that conviction in the heart. So it's a higher level. In Hadith Jibreel, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about Islam first, and then Iman, and then Ihsan. That you worship Allah as though you see Him, and if you do not see Him, then know that He sees you. Okay, so, uh, You did not reach to that high, high level of conviction. Okay, I'll go into the, the reason why this ayah was sent towards them. And not yet has Iman entered into your hearts. Meaning there is a chance. The Mufassirun, by the way, they talk about were these A'rab, were these Bedouins Munafiqun or were they Muslimun? What do you guys think? You shouldn't think, but I'm just, I want to hear. Muslimun. There's a difference of opinion. Imam, Imam al-Bukhari, uh, Ibn Kathir mentions that he was of the opinion that they were from the Munafiqun. Uh, so that you found scholars on different sides. Uh, Al-Muhim. وَلَمَّا يُدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ And not yet has Iman entered into your hearts. Meaning there is a chance. This is of the opinion of those that say they are Muslimun. And for those that say they are Munafiqun, وَلَمَّا يَدَّخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ أَصْلًا Iman it did not even enter into your hearts. You see the difference? وَإِن تُطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And if you obey Allah and His Messenger, لَا يَلِتْكُمْ or لا يألتكم in a different قراءة لا يألتكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور رحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى he will not diminish any of your deeds he is the most forgiving and most merciful okay there was uh, Banu Asad they were the Bedouins they came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and they were boasting and they were they were saying يا رسول الله we accepted Islam and we did not fight you like the other Arabs and they said it to him as though they were doing a favor yeah, we accepted Islam, we're doing you a favor. Look, look at what we brought to you. You know, we did not fight you like them. Look at what we brought to you. And so the Prophet ﷺ, in response to this, he said, in the Their understanding is little. And shaitan speaks on their tongues. You see? This is not, you, do, you and me, we do not do favors to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by being Muslim. <laughs> They're doing a favor to us. And we'll go into that, inshaAllah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, uh, uh, what we can benefit from this ayah, of course, uh, subhanAllah, I just do naql of the different, different sources, so sometimes I lose my place. وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Say that we are people of Islam, we have not reached that level of iman. إِسْتَسْلَمْنَا خَوْفَ الْقَتْلِ Aslan, they only became Muslims so that they don't get into a fight with the, the Muslimun and uh, put themselves into trouble. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell them that you have not reached that true level of iman, okay? Uh, and that if they obey Allah and His Messenger and they turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will not remove and diminish from their reward anything. وَإِن تُطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ If they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and His Messenger, not just in open, not just as Islam, but also iman, in secret. You know they say, Salahu sirri sirru salah. Salahu sirri sirru salah. Piety in secret is the secret to piety. Piety in secrecy is the secret to piety. SubhanAllah, you see that? You see that? Yeah, like that. <laughs> the the uh, na'am? Oh, sirru salah. Oh, jazakum khairan. Afwan. Ana qallabtu al. Sirru salahi. Afan, sirru, the secret to piety, salah husid. Sirru salah, salah husid. The secret to piety is piety in secret. That's what I meant to say. The, the secret to piety, if you all want to be pious, you want to know the secret, be pious in secret when nobody sees you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not Islam, this is Iman. Okay? Wa in tutiyu Allah wa rasulahu in open and in, uh, in secret, sirran wa alaniyatan. Uh, and you have ikhlas la yalitkum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another qira'a la yalitkum inna Allah ghafur rahim he will not diminish any of your deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafur he forgives the sins that you have made rahim there is opportunity for you to repent and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yalitkum la yalitkum na'am Abu Amar and some of the other qira'a they mentioned yeah 
I didn't do naql of that, but I know it's Abu Amr and others. Yeah. المؤمنون, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning the Bedouins, He then says, Who are the believers? Who are the mu'minun? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, You are not believers yet. So who are they? You want to know who the believers are? You want to be a mu'min? The believers are those that believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger and then they have no doubt. They're firm. They're not people who just speak and say, I'm this, I'm that. I'm. If someone says, I'm generous, yalla, show us your generosity. I'm brave, where's your bravery? I am this, I am that. These words don't benefit, okay? These words don't benefit. Seeing true iman. Wallahi, we have so many Muslims nowadays. So billions. Islam, but where's the iman? Where is the true action? This is what we're missing. The, the distraction of the dunya. You know the hadith that you were sending on the group chat? The, the al-wahan, sah? Yeah, that where the, the people will be distracted by the dunya. The, it's not because of a, a loss of numbers or little numbers that we're losing. It's because we're distracted by the dunya. In al-iman. وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ That they didn't just say that they were people of faith. They showed it. They did jihad with their wealth, with their selves in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the people that are true to their word. Those are the truthful ones. The ones that act what they say. Uh, Imam al-Qushayri, he says something very beautiful. He was uh, known as a, a great scholar and a saint. Al-Qulubu la tahya illa ba'da dhabh nufus The hearts do not become alive until you break your nafs. How did Allah describe the mu'min? The one who has no doubt, he's firm. وَأَنفُسِهِمْ Those that do jihad against themselves, that fast, that put effort in their da'wah, that put effort in their ibadah, that put effort in their relationship with the Qur'an. There is a jihad, it's not easy, it's difficult. The one who memorizes the Qur'an, easy, mashallah, patty, he's playing patty cake, he memorizes the Qur'an all of a sudden. Hours and hours, هذه mujahada. This is striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting work, putting effort, building a masjid. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes effort, it takes mujahada, it takes time, it takes blood, sweat, and tears. This is the mujahada of a believer. The hearts do not become alive until you break down your nafs. This is why many of the scholars, they, you know, they would fast for long periods of time so that they could break their nafs. That was what they were always trying to do. Some, I even heard some shuyukh taking cold showers too. I heard this from Shaykh Hamza Yusuf. And I implemented this myself. You really want to do mujahada against yourself? Wake up for fajr and take a cold shower. Wallahi, <laughs> khalas. You're going to be here the first one here. You see? Taking a cold shower. Wallahi, you might think this is silly. And sometimes these kids, this is silly. But doing mujahada against what your nafs wants sometimes is what it needs. Even though it might not make sense. Taking a cold shower. I remember my sheikh, when I first went to Medina, I really liked my hair. He was really... Persistent on you have to shave, you have to shave, you have to shave when you go for Umrah, طبعا. Okay, not just like when you when you go for Umrah, shave, lose that, break your nafs. The, when you look at the Salaf and when you look at our pious predecessors, they did not have this these nufus that we have busied with the dunya. They all, they were so mutawalder. That's why when you hear stories of our scholars like Sheikh Sharawi and many others, they would go to Masajid. Uh, uh, you know, oh, Sheikh Sharawi. I have to mention the story. You know, he got this high, high, lofty position. Everyone knows him as the Mufassir of Egypt. And he was picked up in this very, you know, high class, B, you know, BMW or Mercedes. I don't know, like a really, really nice car. And subhanAllah, he, he wasn't used to that his whole life. He grew up in faqr, in poverty. He knows simple things. And then, you know, he, when he, as soon as he started to, oh, as soon as he started to feel a sense of something coming in his nafs, He said, hey, hey, stop the car. Let me, use the re- let me go to the restroom. He went and stopped at the restroom of a masjid. And he was taking some time, taking some, taking too much time. And then they said, you know, go check up on the sheikh. Let's see if he's okay. What if something happened to him? They went inside. You know what he was doing? Cleaning up the bathroom of the masjid. Isha nafs. They didn't have this, I am this, I am that, I am this. They were so mutawadir. They were so humble. These are our examples These are the people that did mujahada and they, they really strived against their nafs and had hearts that were connected to Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah give us that. Qulu ameen. Ulaika humu sadiqun They are the people that are true with Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from as sadiqun Allahumma ja'ala min as sadiqin ya Rabbi. Qul atu'allimuna Allah bidinikum. 
say to them, do you presume to teach Allah about His religion? That I am this, Ya Allah, I am this, I am that. Because they came to say that, oh, we're doing you a favor, we're doing this. Wallahu ya'lamu ma fi samawa. You don't need to tell Allah who you are and what you have and this, this, that. Allah knows. Allah knows what is in the heavens and the earth. Allah with everything, He is alim. So He knows whether you're lying or telling the truth. He knows deep, deep, deep down inside what you have. You could say, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. But Allah knows deep down inside. That's why we have to strive within ourselves. Strive within ourselves and try to always purify our intention. This takes effort and takes time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that. يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا They they think they, they have done you a favor. يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيْهِ أَسْلَمُوا You have not done me a favor. You have not... Don't think that this is a favor that you have done for me. بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one that has done you a favor by guiding you to iman. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are truly sincere. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Hunayn, he was speaking to the Ansar. He said, Ya ma'ashar al-Ansar, Alam ajidkum dullala fahadakumu Allahu bi. And they said, Allahu wa rasuluhu aman. Allah and his messenger have most favored us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the Ansar, Ya Ansar, have I not found you astray and Allah guided you through me? They said, Allah and His Messenger have most favored us. Then, then the Prophet said, وَكُنْتُمْ مُتَفَرِّقِينَ فَأَلَّفَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِي And you were divided. Were you not divided and Allah united you through me? They said, Allah wa Rasuluhu amannu. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَعَالَةً فَأَغْنَاكُمُ اللَّهُ بِي and were you not poor and Allah gave you riches through me? And they said, Allah and His Messenger have most favored us. SubhanAllah. Look, this is the believers, this is the response. We think of the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger have done for us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah ya'lamu ghayba samawati wal Allah knows that the unseen of the heavens and the earth, ghayba samawati wal ardh, wallahu basir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees everything. Wallahu basirun bima ta'maloon and ya'maloon. Two different qiras. Ta'maloon, ya'maloon. He is all aware and He sees everything that you do and that they do. Again, it's the same thing. So some lessons that we could take from this, and with this we end this beautiful, beautiful surah. Some, this is a surah that we need to always come back to and remind ourselves of the akhlaq, because this is a surah that we need to always, this is the one that we str uh, struggle with within ourselves. Looking down at people, backbiting, these are key things that a Muslim needs in his life. Some lessons we take from these last ayat. Don't talk about yourself and brag. I am this and that. I am this and that. Allah knows who you are. You don't need to say who you are and this, 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 that. Especially if it's untrue. Kabura maqatil عند الله أن تقول ما لا تفعلون. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah wa radiyan. Once he was walking with his student Abu Yusuf. Okay, and some people said, Oh, you know who that is? That's Abu Hanifa. He prays the whole night. Isha and Fajr same wudu, mashaAllah. Imam Abu Hanifa, he heard this and he said. I cannot let people say something about me and it's not true. And from that moment on, he spent every single night awake in ibadah. You might say, when did he sleep? This is a straight wali. This is someone who has a close connection to Allah Azza wa We don't understand these things. He would spend from Isha to Fajr and with the same tahara, same wudu. Can you imagine? Uh, your iman will require you to do. It's not just ana mu'min, ana mu'min. La, show it. It's shown through action. وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Allah has done us a favor. Not we are doing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a favor. Last thing, last lesson that I'll end with. If you're happy with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you. Let's say Allah has given you Qur'an, you're happy with it. Don't say ana, ana fa'altu, ana kada, ana, ana, ana. Nowadays we're obsessed with al-dama'ir al-muttasila wa al-munfasila. We love saying, I did this, I did this. لا لا أنت من أنت من أنا we're literally tiny tiny servants of Allah عز وجل instead of saying I did this say my shuyukh taught me this is what our teachers taught us my shuyukh dar tabiya my parents my teachers Allah عز وجل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم don't say I did this I did this but give that praise to others and show that that favor is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى not from some virtue that you and I have we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of Qur'an. Allahumma ja'al Qur'an hujjatan lana, wa la taj'alhu hujjatan alayna. 
اللهم اجعلنا اللهم اجعلنا ممن يقرأه فيرقى ولا تجعلنا ممن يقرأه فيزل ويشقى اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن أهل الله وخاصته وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين دعوي questions إن شاء الله جوهد What do you mean? So like when I say that I'm You are a mu'min. We all believe inshallah you're coming for a salah, we see you, your son is... I'm a mu'min. But... Uh, so a, a Muslim should be between two different wings. One wing is raja, hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, and khawf, and fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. You're in between, but lean towards the love. Lean towards the mercy, and that'll keep you balanced. One of, the, one of our shiuch, he said that I gave khutbah and da'wah for decades, decades, and I found nothing more, subhanAllah, I think it was one of the Indian subcontinent scholars, he said uh, that I found nothing more effective with the people than targheeb, than motivating them and talking about Jannah. This was much more beneficial than saying, Antum, you are the worst people, you fear the hellfire. La. Motivating people and elevating them is far more effective. So be more balanced on the love and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. The second question is uh, sometimes we know, uh, we know, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa he said, قَالْ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ You know, when he asked to see, and then he said, بَلَا وَلَكِ لِيَطْمَ إِنَّ قَلْبِي So that my heart becomes more firm. Even Musa alayhi salam with the incidents, it's normal for us to see things and sometimes question it. It's طَبِعَ أَنْتَ بَشَرْ You're a human being. No, no. Inshallah, just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you ثَبَاتِ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ Why? Oh, it was too harsh. It was too harsh, okay. <laughs> alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So we are, we are the nation of knowledge. No. So this like, knowledge of like, beyond hope and fear. Mm -hmm. So that's khashi. Al-Khashi, Allah. So that's why it is uh, like uh, the umbrella of uh, hope and fear is khashi. And khashi is coming from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the idea of hope and fear and hope is not as I, some people might think. Mm -hmm. It's like beyond that. So that's why Rasulullah said, Ama, ama akhsharkum billah wa mm -hmm. So when you have ma'rifah, the knowledge, you have this khashya. And this khashya, mostly you have these like both. And it's not about like fear. And yes, what you are, what you are, what you, what you said about this, so mostly like some people just like attracting people from that to you, and that's not the situation of religion. Mm -hmm. So the, the Islam is about knowledge. Mm -hmm. And knowledge is not like, you, we are not driven by fear. Mm -hmm. We are not driven by like scary. Uh, no. We have knowledge, and then based on this knowledge, we we we, 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 we. Beautiful. I'm just going to repeat it so that the people on the live stream. Sheikh said, uh, Sheikh Islam, he said that khawf and raja is under the umbrella of khashya. SubhanAllah, that's so beautiful. So beautiful. <coughs> and on the, the anna, so yeah. some yeah. Uh, scholars said, Ruhya anna, ya fasid al tartibi, ya ha'ilan bayni wa bayna habibi. So anna is between two alif. Is that noon is noon in Jamaah. No. So it's like it's like between two walls, like the ego is like very firm. 